All right, welcome everybody. Today I'm gonna to give you a little treat for history buffs. You might know about the people that were the founders of the independence of the United States and the American Revolution. But do you know about the independence of the countries in Latin America? Well, the hero of the independence of much of South America was named Simon Bolivar. I'm standing here at the house of Simon Bolivar. Simon Bolivar was from Venezuela but he actually moved to Bogota, Colombia when he was known as the liberator and I believe the president of a confederation of countries that are now separate countries today, but it was one massive country. So Simon Bolivar is probably one of, if not the most important historical figures in the history of Latin America. And I'm here today at one of his houses. The name of the house that I'm at is called Casa Quinta de Bolivar. He only owned it for about 10 years when he was here in Bogota, and this was in the early 1800s, somewhere between 1820 and 1830. The house itself actually dates back to 1670, so it's a pretty old structure. But the way it is now, apparently, is a lot like how it looked when Simone Bolivar lived here. It's very near Montserrat, which is the number two attraction here in Bogota, Colombia. Montserrat is actually the place where you can climb all the way up to the top of this beautiful hill and see spectacular views of the city. But it belonged to a monastery. At one point, I believe this house also did too. That's why it's so close to Montserrat. But this house actually would have been more like a countryside retreat for Simone Bolivar. So it's outside of what would have been the center of the city at the time. Of course, now it's in the center of the city. So let's go take a look inside and see how Simone Bolivar lived when he was known as the liberator of Latin America and when he maybe needed a little bit of a getaway. This is the dining room that Simone Bolivar had created and would have used. It's unique because they didn't have dining rooms in Latin America, or at least in Colombia at the time. But he brought this tradition from Europe and from France. He was apparently a very refined person. Bolivar lived here with his lover, whose name was Manuelita, and she was from Quito, Ecuador. Apparently he had many, 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 many lovers, but this one was very special. This is Simon Bolivar's bedroom. I don't believe they slept in the same bed, but they probably used it. Simon Bolivar was, is a little bit controversial. He's known as the liberator. He actually had a mural painted saying that he was the god of Colombia, even though many say he rejected the title of emperor. So very controversial history, very interesting person. I refuse to admit that I'm in any way a diva, but I've always wanted a bed like this. Not because I want to feel royal, because I love the idea of enclosing myself in some sort of curtains, or at least my head. Because I don't want to see the bright light. I also have a pretty badass sword here. So right now I'm standing in what was called the huerta, which basically means a garden where they would grow foods and herbs. And they've recreated it to look like it would have in the time of Bolivar. So because he had stomach problems and other illnesses, he would have grown plants and herbs, things to eat and things like oregano and different spices in the garden in the backyard. So here we have some kale. So it looks like, just like me, Simone Bolivar liked to have a kale smoothie in the morning. <laughs> it's hard to say the name. Sorcilicio? Sor Sor Sorcilicio. Sor Sor it has a very interesting texture. And when you rub it with your finger, you can smell. It's, a, it's actually a wonderful smell. It's, it's almost like a perfume. And apparently at the time they would use it um, to make oils, but also as a calming fragrance. The tour guide was just explaining that 
they would eat about 11 times a day in these small little meals. One of them might be ahiako, which is it's just a, like a stew and a soup. But every day they would have chocolate. So instead of coffee, actually, which you associate with Colombia, they would drink chocolate. They would drink sweet chocolate. I find that pretty fascinating. I'd like to start the morning with a little sweet chocolate drink. Sometimes I complain about my Airbnb, but after looking at this bed, I think I have it pretty good. Well, who knows, maybe it's stuffed with some really nice straw. This is the kitchen. So it's actually, as you can see back then in these style of homes, the kitchen would have been always in a separate building. So this is kind of the main building. And then back here, separate from the smells and the heat, Woo, it just <laughs> fell in their drain. So <laughs> another, another interesting aspect is there would have been these water drains going throughout so that they could wash in the kitchen and then it would drain out. But um, here you can also see they would grind corn and they would make, uh, here instead of tortillas, like in Mexico, they would make what are called arepas, which is a, a food you see in Venezuela and Colombia. So it's another kind of a, a corn, kind of a corn patty, a little thicker. So all in this back area would have lived Bolivar's servants. A lot of them were women. They say it was because they were cooks and stuff, but that always makes me suspicious when very prolific gentlemen have lots of women servants but look up look how beautiful the view is back there i mean that would be your view every day seeing montserrat which is right now one of the number one tourist attractions in colombia so he had it right there this dios de colombia i particularly asked the tour guide about the thickness i mean here's the window and that's the inside it's a very very thick wall i mean you don't see this really much in north america most of the things in the 1800s were built out of wood but here everything was built from adobe which is the kind of construction that they would have needed not only what you see in a lot of latin america but in a particularly moist area like this you would have needed these thick adobe walls to absorb a lot of the moisture and humidity and also it needed to be thick because they do have earthquakes here and if the movement shakes, it, apparently it's more adaptable and, and flexible to that. I'm also enamored by the idea of sitting at a desk like that. Just no computers, no screens, sitting and writing at a beautiful old wood desk. I want to talk for a moment about this Manuelita, who was his lover and lived with him here and threw parties here because this was in the countryside. This was where they would have entertained and socialized and networked. Apparently she's been given pretty short shrift by history. Some have even called her a prostitute, but she actually came from a wealthy family in Quito. Her dad was Spanish and her mom was what's called Quiteña, which means someone from that area. I think most of her heritage was probably Spanish. But the debatable historical question, as is always the case with women, it seems like, is what role did this Manuelita Saenz actually have in the liberation and revolutionary movement that was sweeping across South America? Some say, because of her education and upbringing, that she was actually a, considered a bastard and the nuns or the people in the church always told her that the Virgin Mary was against her type of people, that she had a particular affinity, perhaps, with the revolutionaries. And this may have been what drew her to be the lover and the companion, because Simon Bolivar's wife had died by this time and all the rest of his women didn't get to stick around, but she got to. So why was she his favorite companion? Apparently, there's a strong argument that she may have actually been a much bigger participant in the liberation of all of these countries than has previously been talked about. So I'm not only at the house of the great liberator, the controversial conservative liberator, Simon Bolivar, but of Manuelita Sáenz, his lover and co-revolutionary. The wonderful tour guide and the nice guards are ready to go home. So I'm going to leave this beautiful house of Simone Bolivar for now. And I will see you all next time. Please be sure to subscribe. Behind me is a spy, a female spy who was shot here in Bogota in 1817. And here are her last words about how dedicated she was to the cause of independence. Her name was La Pola. Policarpa Salvarieta Rios, La Pola.